I'm Eric, and this is a PIO vlog. We have a working fire. Smoke sugar from the second and first floor alpha side. Charlie, one additional medic unit. Confirm one victim trapped in the basement. On the wastewater plant. Six feet on three stories. Medium sized commercial. I do have fire from the roof. Hey everyone, welcome back to another vlog. It's so great to see all of you. I know it's been a while and we've gotten a lot of questions about what's going on around South Metro, so we'll get right into it. First, I'm gonna start off with a structure fire that occurred on Tuesday, February 16th in Arapahoe County. South Metro Fire, what is the address of the emergency? Yeah, hi, Sherman in Bellevue, just east of Broadway. Okay. Uh, I just drove by, it looked like there was a house fire that just got it started. Uh, okay. There's black smoke, and I could see the flames from the street. South Central Fire Rescue, what is the address in the emergency? I don't know the address. The house is right on Bellevue, one block east of Broadway. The house is on fire. It looks like maybe the kitchen and then the um, patio cover. Tower 32, engine 38, engine 15, medic 16, battalion chief 2, safety 18, Channel SMF off 7, reported residential structure fire, map page R23B, 5101, South Sherman Street. Engine 13, engine 16, medic 15, battalion chief 3, met 1, confirmed residential structure fire, map page R23B, 5101, South Sherman Street. Engine 13, Engine 16, Medic 15, Battalion Chief 3, Med 1, Confirmed Residential Structure Fire. Engine 11, Confirmed Residential Structure Fire, Map Page R23B, 5101, South Sherman Street. Engine 11, Confirmed Residential Structure Fire. Dispatch safety 18. Safety team. Unseen, small, single story, single family residence. Looks like we've got a working fire on the Charlie side. Safety team will be on the Alpha side in command. County Safety AT and I come here on scene of a small, single story, single family residence with a working fire on the Charlie side. You're located on the Alpha side and taking command 1503. Command, engine 11 on scene. Want us to pull a line? Engine 11, that's a firm. Looks like majority of the fire's on the Charlie side. I did not get 360 yet. Homeowners out, stating all people are out. Some of you may have noticed a passenger get out of safety 18, and that's the captain who's assigned to the vehicle. A lieutenant who's in training to be a safety officer was in command and behind the wheel. Here in this video, you can see firefighter on engine 11 open up that gate, and you can see a firefighter shouldering the cross lay and pulling the hose line. So that cross lay is 200 feet long, and you can see him take that bundle and pull it down the side of the house to the rear where the fire is. And now engine 38 has come into frame and they're awaiting instructions on where to get a water supply. Looks like the closest plug might be to the Charlie side of the house, behind the houses. So engine 38's working their way through opposing traffic on Bellevue Avenue to get to the nearest hydrant and supply water to engine 11 while the engine 11 firefighters are getting in position. Ready for water. The two firefighters on engine 11 are ready for water and calling for that in the back of the house where the bulk of the fire is actually burning on the exterior and starting to work its way into the attic. Command engine 11. Go for command. 360 is complete. No basement. We're going to remain offensive on the Charlie side, making a transitional. This is the view from Battalion 3 responding into the scene. You can see a little bit more of the smoke conditions and that steam conversion from the firefighters on Engine 11 making an initial knockdown on the exterior fire. You could also see Engine 38 establishing that water supply. Yeah, 
Yeah, John, same chief. All right, I'm going to go ahead and assume command in the offensive strategy. It looks like 11s is fire attack, 38s getting them water supply, and had you assigned engine 15 anything yet? Engine 15, we're just going to check access on Alpha side and go on deck. Homeowner confirms everyone's out. So engine 15 is actually parked down the block behind the safety officer truck. They've been assigned to pull a second attack line off of engine 11 and advance that through the front door. And you can see tower 32 getting into position now to go up onto the roof for vertical ventilation. First medic, go ahead and come on deck alpha side. Position your rig Typically, out. South Metro dispatches two medic units to working structure fires. Medic 15, level one. The first medic unit that arrives will be generally medic assigned 15, to help out with medic. primary searches or with fire attack, whatever right. the critical factor might be. And the second arriving medic yeah, unit 11, is assigned one. to medical unless there's an actual patient or patients who've been identified. Medic 11, go ahead and remain level one. Copy, level one. Command battalion two on scene. Battalion two, Kiro, go check out the Charlie side and go face to face with engine 11. Copy, Charlie side. Yeah. What's this line right here? This, 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 what 11s was, that was their first, that was the first line in. Here you can see the crew of Tower 32 conducting vertical ventilation. One hole is already complete towards the Charlie side of the house where you can see fire venting out. They're cutting additional holes towards the Alpha side. The goal of this is to basically create chimneys in the roof to allow flames and superheated smoke to escape from the attic when the engine companies are able to apply water down below. Water on the fire. Command, we have water on the fire as well. Command, safety team. Good, safety team. Electrical been secured on the Charlie side. Copy. Electrical secure on the Charlie side. Command, division 15. We need an attic ladder, interior. Yeah, we need an attic ladder, interior, and fire attack. Taylor! Come on, we'll try to finish this. Delay 32. We're not going to fire out of here. Delta, corner, this is Delta, all here. Active fire out of the Delta Eve as well. Engine 13, come in. Engine 13, we're working on the steering dash. Copy. Hang on, just back in. Go ahead, let's go. In this video clip, you can see Acting Battalion Chief 2 in the foreground talking with our South Metro Fire Investigator and showing him pictures of what the back of the house looked like before a bunch of debris was moved out of the way and before the walls started to be opened up to search for fire extension. Investigators determined after interviewing the homeowner and looking at all of the information that they had very carefully that this fire was probably caused by improperly disposed smoking material. 
And we see that a lot, both in potted plants where that material is actually organic and can burn, or into plastic containers or combustible containers where cigarette butts may sit and smolder and then ignite and catch the rest of the material on fire around them. Sometimes that includes patio furniture, and in this case, fire was able to get into the siding of the house and spread to the structure. So this cause was accidental. This incident serves as a reminder to everyone to be extra careful with things that are smoldering or hot when you're discarding them, like cigarettes or fireplace ashes. I know a lot of you have seen the PIO job posting that South Metro put out a few weeks ago, and you're probably wondering where Connor is, so I'm gonna get to all of that right now. It's exciting to share that Connor was promoted to a new position, which is called Executive Communications Manager. It's the first time that this position has ever existed at South Metro, and it's to focus on one of South Metro's strategic goals, which is enhancing internal communications. So Connor is still a part of the communications team, but her focus has gone away from public information and more to communications within our organization with the executive team and some other special projects from our fire chief. So Connor is actually on assignment out of state right now, but you'll still see her as PIO 11, covering calls and responding to incidents occasionally. Since Connor got this promotion, that's why we had to post a job opening for a new PIO and we had applicants from across the country with various skill sets from firefighters to TV news reporters, photojournalists, and of course, some PIOs. One of the assignments that they received to go on to the next level of testing after they applied was to submit a video project to us that talked about who they were and why they wanted to work at South Metro. And some of the creativity was so much fun to watch for all of us who interviewed those candidates. And a few of them were invited to come to an in-person interview or interview remotely with our team of panelists. So I'm excited to say that we did make a job offer to an amazing person and that person accepted. They are currently going through their background check process right now. Once that's completed and they're able to start here at South Metro, I'll be excited to introduce you to them and they will help me continue on the vlog and take on some new social media projects like TikTok. Some other exciting news to share with you are apparatus updates, and I received a lot of questions because some of you follow our board of directors meeting minutes on the southmetro.org website and saw something about a Bendy fire truck. That's right, South Metro is approved to purchase a tiller, a tractor drawn aerial. So some of the details that I can share with you are just very preliminary because the order process has really just started with this vehicle but it is approved and it will be a tiller ladder that will be stationed at station 34. That tiller will replace Tower 34 and Rescue 34 and be a heavy rescue tiller company. So the other moves that will happen, Rescue 34 will go out of service. It was constructed in 1999 by E1, so it's an older piece of apparatus that will be retired. And you may have noticed in a Fleet Friday on Collapse 45 that there's some extra space in that vehicle. So the equipment from Rescue 34 that may not fit on the tiller and be a priority piece of equipment will end up being moved to Collapse 45 and Collapse 45 will respond when necessary to technical rescue incidents. But Tiller 34 will be set up to handle most of the immediate heavy rescue needs. You may be wondering what will happen to the Pierce Tower that's at Station 34 and the initial thought is that vehicle will become Tower 35 since it's newer and Tower 35's Pierce Aerial will go into the reserve fleet. So more on that to come. Apparatus are taking a long time to build, so it's still gonna be a while before we see that truck. Um, what I can tell you is it's on a Pierce Velocity chassis and it will have quint capabilities, meaning it has the ability to have water on board and cross lays and still function as a fire suppression unit when necessary. When drawings are available, Fleet will share those with me so that I can update you on that progress. Another vehicle replacement that we have coming up, which is also exciting, is a replacement for Hazmat 38. So the current Hazmat 38, the body was built by SVI in the 1990s, and it was mounted on a crew cab chassis in the early 2000s. 
So that vehicle is up for replacement, and here are some drawings of it. SVI was selected as the builder, and it's on a commercial chassis rather than a custom fire department chassis like you would normally see or like Hazmat 38 has today. The vehicle does look kind of similar to what the mobile command post looks like, but it is different, and you can see this overview that shows the three different slide outs and where some of the seating positions are at. Lucky for us, SVI is actually a Colorado-based company and it's not a terribly far drive from South Metro. So hopefully as this vehicle continues in production, we'll be able to take you behind the scenes into that production process with the HAZMAT team and the apparatus committee to see the details of that vehicle as it's being built out. I've also gotten some questions about new engines that are on order, and we have three engines from Pierce that have been ordered. And again, the production process is taking a little longer than usual, so we still haven't seen those vehicles yet. But the three engines are going to engine 23, engine 40, and engine 47. And this is the drawing of engine 23. There's only a couple small differences that most people won't be able to notice between these. Engine 23 will have a 750 gallon water tank since most of its first due area is suburban. Engine 40 and engine 47 will have 1000 gallon water tanks since they're in more rural areas. And they'll also have some additional scene lighting since those areas tend to be a little bit darker, especially on those nighttime operations. Many of you have asked if engine 40 and 47 will have tandem axle engines like they have today, and they will not. It will be a single axle in the rear of the vehicle. They will look very similar to the other new engines that have been purchased, and water tenders will make up that rural water supply response. Most of their surrounding engine companies also have a thousand gallons of water to help in those unhydrated areas. Some other big news on the EMS side of the house. We have nine new medic units in production from AEV, and you can see the drawings of what those look like. They'll be very similar in appearance to what the new Medic 32 and Medic 21 look like today. So nine of those have been ordered for this year, and we have an additional five that will be ordered and will probably be here in 2023. South Metro has a total of 19 medic units, so within the next couple years, this will replace 14 of the 19, and we just got those two new deliveries for 32s and 21s, so the majority of the medic unit fleet will be replaced in the next couple years with this model. Another question that I often get is, where is the merch? So an update on that. I had a great meeting with Denver Athletic and with South Metro's Logistics Bureau last week. We finalized what the shirt designs are going to look like and the store will be open in two weeks. And I will share a link to the store then. The store will remain open throughout the entire year so you can make orders whenever you'd like. Denver Athletic will fulfill those orders as they compile them and get those shipped out. So they'll share more information on what that process looks like. One of the shirts is really exciting. It has a full color design of engine 44 on the back and within the SMFR letters, you can see the Centennial Airport Control Tower as well as a couple other local features. And what we plan to do is twice a year, host a survey here on YouTube and you, the audience, get to decide which fire engine or piece of apparatus will be featured on the next shirt. So stay tuned for that, but 44s and this design will be next up. We already have patches available for sale through 911patches.com. That link is in the video description down below if you wanna buy some patches. And as soon as the shirts are available, I will post a link to that here as well. All right, now to patch shout outs. I had a very nice gentleman stop by our fire headquarters from Poland. He gave me a calendar that's actually up on my office wall and this really awesome patch. And check out this unique one. I don't think a lot of people probably have this. This is Robbins Air Force Base in Georgia. This next patch comes to us from Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin Fire Department. The colors on this one are pretty impressive. This is Green Knoll Fire Rescue. These two patches come to us from Indiana. This one is New Haven Adams Township Fire Rescue. And the second one is from Culver Fire Department, also Union Township. 
This next one comes to us from Star Township, Ohio. All right, so the next three patches I have come to us from Germany, and I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce these. Usually I give the hard ones to Connor, but she's out of town right now. Berufa uh, from Colon. Okay, cool. Eric, get out of the way. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of this. Okay. One. So, next patches we have are from the Berufsfeuerwehr Köln. So, shout out goes to alle Kameradinnen und Kameraden von der Berufsfeuerwehr Köln und unsere Kollegen in Deutschland. So, wir haben diese drei äh, Ärmelabzeichen von der Berufsfeuerwehr. Wunderbar. Vielen Dank für diese. Und. Vielen Dank für die Bilder von den Modellfahrzeugen und von dem Rettungswagen der Berufsfeuerwehr Köln. Also, ich gebe es weiter an Eric. Eric, it's all yours. Thank you. And now everything in English as well. So we got three patches from the uh, Career Fire Department in Cologne, Germany. We got uh, one of their EMS patches, one of their Chiefs patches, and one of their regular firefighter patches. Along with that, they sent us amazing pictures of model vehicles that they made in Germany of all their, of all their trucks, engines, re rescue units. I hope you can see them all. Interior of one of the engines. Amazing German organization inside an engine. And engine that worked on fire. In addition, they sent us this model of one of their medic units. I hope you can see it. Wonderful. So and their medic units are uh, pretty much the same as ours, they just don't have fire equipment in them, but amazing concept that they have over there. So thanks again to the fire department in Cologne and thanks to all the German fire departments that are sending us all their patches. And just in case anybody's wondering that's watching, how did you come to speak German so well? Oh yeah, about that. So I'm originally from Germany, born and raised in Germany in uh, Bavaria, down south, deep south Germany. And I came over here when I was uh, 21 years old and uh, became a firefighter here in the States. I started up in the mountains in uh, Eagle River and uh, then came to Littleton in 2002. And then with the big merge, became a South Metro firefighter two years ago. And I'm just psyched to be here and super excited to be part of this great organization. And what do you do here? Uh, I'm an EMS operations captain and uh, so I'm doing my admin rotation right now and then I'm normally the station captain at station 13. Awesome. All right, thanks buddy. Eric, back to you. <laughs> thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel and for all of your support. Especially thank you to everyone who sends us these awesome letters and patches. I'm excited that we'll finally have this merchandise store set up year round for all of you because I know that's something that you've been asking for. Next week, I will be out at the Fleet Bureau shooting a day in the life of Fleet. So if you have any questions for them, please write me, write me down below in the video comments and I'll be sure to ask those questions when I'm over at Fleet. And excited to bring you new videos moving forward. If you have any suggestions, let me know. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do that. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Catch you next time.